Okay, quick video to show you how to set up your Android phone or tablet to automatically open your Ring doorbell live video feed when you receive a notification from it. Uh, not to waste anyone's time, this will not work on uh, an Apple device. This will only work on an Android uh, phone or tablet. Now, wife's out at the moment, so if I hit the Ring doorbell and actually ring it, I'm going to get her answering and she's going to know what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trigger the motion of the ring doorbell, which I've got the ring doorbell application set up so that it also notifies me for motion. That will get the notification from ring and it will open the feed. Uh, for yourselves, depending on how you want to do it, you can have the application on your tablet set up to only give you an application when ring doorbell is pressed so it only brings the feed up when someone rings the doorbell or you could have it set up so that it will bring up notification also bring up live feed whenever it does motion okay let me just uh, open the front door and trigger the motion two seconds okay I've just triggered ring notification the notifications just come through there loading up the app now bring my live feed it will now sit there for 45 seconds and we'll close. I'm not going to sit here and wait for five seconds for it to close, but you have to take my word for it. Okay, we'll now move on to the next step, which is configuring it. One thing to mention is the device you're doing it on, tablet, your phone, whatever, has to have uh, no lock screen. Uh, otherwise, when the notification comes in, Tasker can't automatically unlock your phone. Uh, if you've got a rooted device, you can get Tasker to unlock your device. It gets a bit more tricky and you've got things rooted. So if you've got a tablet at home like I have here, you're pretty safe. You don't need a lock screen, pin or password. You can have the screen just turned off. When notification comes through, it just automatically loads it up and sees the feed. Okay, let's get on to the actual setting up. Okay, I'm going to try and make this video as quick and as easy as possible. I'm going to need two apps that you can download from the Play Store. First app is Tasker. It's a paid app uh, from memory. I can't remember how much it was, but it's not much. So you need to search for Tasker in the Play Store, install that. The second app you're going to need is an app called auto notification you are going to need the full paid version for this to work again I don't think it was very much can't remember off top memory okay once you've installed both tasker and auto notification we can carry on and configure it all okay click on the tasker application and it will load up. You may get some pop-up messages, some things just to click OK on as you load up, but that's fine. Okay, Tasker is very similar to If This Then That, but it's like a local version. It only does things on your phone or your tablet. So if something locally happens on your phone, then locally do this on your phone or tablet. I won't go into too much details about it. There's loads of videos out there about Tasker and how to use it. It does a lot of clever things. But yeah, let's get on with it. So up at the top here, we've got profiles, tasks, and scenes. So the only bits we're going to be worried about is profiles and tasks. Profiles is the equivalent to if, in if this and that. So down the bottom right corner, we've got the plus symbol. We're going to click the plus symbol. And we're then going to click on event. So we'll click on event. Okay, we're now going to go to plugin. And we're going to click on auto notification. And then going to click on to intercept. It brings it up with this screen. Now where it says configuration, you've got the little pen slash pencil symbol on the right hand side. So we're going to click on that. 
Okay, we've got all these options come now. We're going to click on second option down, action type. And then we're going to click on created, the top option. Okay. We're now going to scroll down a bit and we can see where it says here apps. Choose which apps and notifications you want to intercept. So we're going to click on that. And it gives us all the apps on your tablet or phone. We need to scroll down until we find Ring. Okay, click on Ring. Now I am assuming that you've got the Ring doorbell and you've got Ring app actually installed on your phone or tablet that you're doing this on and configured. Okay, we've done that. Now we now click on the tick at the top right hand corner of the screen. So we click on tick. And it's brought us up with a little bit just saying what we've configured. The task was a bit bit weird. There isn't an OK button. The OK button is on the top left there, which is like a, where you see event edit. Just to the left of that you can see a little backwards arrow. That's kind of its way of saving it. I know it's quite confusing, but so we click on the back arrow. Okay, that's made our profile. It's now saying to add a new task. So we we'll click on the plus symbol. If I had tasks already created, it may ask me, do you want to choose one of the tasks you've already created? Or do you want new task? I've blanked everything to make it even easier. So we we'll click on new task. Okay, it's asking us for what we want the task name to be. Just call it saying that you you will remember what that task is. So I'm just going to say ring ring note open. This can be anything you want. Just say it meaningful to you. Okay, once I've typed that, just beside where I've typed, you press the tick symbol. Okay, we're now creating a task. We press the plus symbol on the bottom right. And we're going to go to plugin. Okay, so click on plugin. We'll go to auto notification again. And this time we're going to click on uh, actions. Uh, second option down there, so we we'll click on actions. Now, where it says configuration at the top, we're going to click on the pencil slash pen symbol again. We're now going to click on the action ID. Now, just we could type here, uh, but to make it easier, there's the little I don't know how to describe it uh, square type white boxes there. So, if we click on that, I'll hover over it and you should see a highlight. Okay, now here's all the different options of stuff we can have. If you go on Google, in there, you'll see that. Give you a description of all these, but the ones we want is sorry, let me find it. Apologies, I don't normally make videos like this. Okay, I've scrolled down, we've got one there, it says AN. Uh, no, sorry, apologies. We're looking for AN touch action. Probably scrolled past it about three times now. There we go. AN touch action. So that's the one we want. You could just type that in if you want to. So we press OK. And then we press a tick on the top right. Okay, the weird bit about saving, we press on the backward arrow on the top left. Okay, this is now what it will do now is when it receives a notification from Ring, it will click on that notification, therefore opening up the app. If you want it just to do that, that's fine. Uh, another little trick which I've got in mind is I then automatically close that app down after 
a specified length of time. So let's click on the plus symbol again on the bottom right. And where it says fill at the bottom, I'm going to type in there weight. Okay, so we've got weight at the top. I'm going to click on that. Now, this is where I tell it how long do you wait before closing the app. Uh, this is your preference. Kind of see what is best for you. Also, from the second it clicks on the notification, it starts the countdown time of how long to wait before closing it. So if your tablet, your phone is a little bit slow, it takes six seconds to load the app to bring up the screen. If you tell this to wait seven seconds and then close, your feed will come up and then literally a second later it will close again. So kind of play with it a bit and work out which you think is best to have how long. I'm just gonna set this to I'm gonna set this to one minute. Okay. Now I click on the backwards arrow on top left again. Okay, now we've got there to wait a minute. Now if I click on the plus symbol again, bottom right. And where the filter is again, if we click on that and type the word kill, there's the option there to kill app. So if we click on that. Okay. It now will list a load of all the apps you've got on your tablet slash phone. So I'm going to click on ring. And then I'm going to click on the backwards arrow on the top left. That is our task now configured. So first action, click on the notification to load the app. Second option, second action, sorry is wait for a specified time and then the third action is close the app, kill the app then ready to start again later on if you if you decide, uh, if I click on the backwards arrow uh, it's giving me tips of things I can do, I'm not really interested okay so there's my profile uh, there's my profile there's a list of my tasks, I've only got the one. One important thing we do need to do is on the top right, oh, I'm about to run out, let's do this quick. Top right, the three little dots, if we click on that, you've got, I've got task and enable at the moment, let's disable that. Uh, three clicks on top right, you've got enable tasker. You need to enable it so it sits in the background monitoring your phone, your tablet, and then performing whatever tasks uh, profiles similar to the if bit. If that bit's not enabled, then it won't be looking for things to trigger. Um, it does drain your battery a little bit, but if you've got a tablet plugged in indoors, it's not going to matter. Um, if you're doing it on your phone or something, and you don't want it to be draining your battery, you can disable it, but obviously it won't trigger anything. Okay, so we can now come out of this. Uh, okay, it's coming way out. Now we can just sit it on our home screen, let it play. And as soon as we do, as soon as the notification comes up, it starts playing. Now let's go back into Tasker quickly. If I load Tasker back up again, if I click on Tasks, there's the one we created. If I click on it, if I want to, I can click on Action Two where we said wait a minute and I can change that if I find that's too long I can change that to let's do seconds set 45 seconds click on the backwards arrow I've now changed that to 45 seconds now if I click on the backward arrow again that's now saved it so that's how you go in and later on down the line if you want to change how long it's open for okay hope that helps um, any problems just give us a shout give us a message on the comment on the Facebook thread or whatever or a comment on this video and I'll try and help you if I can hope that helped and I hope you have a good weekend speak to you later